Hey gang, so in this video we're going to talk a little bit more about acceleration calculations and the ones that we've done previously have talked about objects that are starting to accelerate from rest. Now these ones that we're going to talk about in this video are slightly different in that these objects already have a little bit of speed to them. They're already, they're already moving. So what we're going to do here is talk about the big idea. So in other words, how do we solve acceleration problems for objects that are already going, that are already moving? And these are the three equations that we're, that we're going to use. Now we'll talk a little bit more about them in a, in a second. But in these examples, remember, the object is already moving. It has an, an initial velocity. Also, the object is accelerating, so it's a positive acceleration. And in the cases where we're talking about free fall, the acceleration due to gravity, so little g, is 9.8 meters per second squared. So here, let's get into the different equations. So the first one is the equation where you're solving for final velocity. And in this particular instance, you are going to be using the, the initial velocity, so v sub i, and adding that to um, acceleration times time. So in other words, what you're doing is you're taking the initial velocity, finding the velocity that happens after a certain amount of time, and just adding them together. In the second equation, we're solving for the dis total distance traveled of a moving object. In this case, we're going to take the initial velocity, multiply that by the time it's been traveling, and then add that to 1 half times the acceleration times the time squared. In the last equation that we're going to use, it's another one that's solving for final velocity. In this one, it's not written really great, but that's supposed to be... That's supposed to be a square root. Um, but another way to find the final velocity is to take the square root of the initial velocity squared and adding that to 2 times acceleration times distance. So let's just do some examples so you can kind of see this in action. So here's the first one that, that we have. In this case, we've got a student that's on a sled. So think cascades. All right. So cascades, you've got the sled got the student there. Aren't I a great artist? All right, anyways, um, so the student's on a sled. It's moving down the hill with an acceleration of 3 meters per second squared. I should say 3.0. And if the student gets a running start, they have an initial velocity of 1 meter per second. Now the question is, how fast is the student traveling after five seconds? So if we're looking there, we've got, so time is going to be five seconds. So what is it that we're really trying to find? Well, we want to find the, the velocity after five seconds. So in this case, it's going to be our final velocity. So look at those, um, look at those equations that I gave you. And I think which of those solves for final velocity and has initial velocity, acceleration, and time? Well, it's going to be this one. So final velocity is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration multiplied by time. So if I go and do the, the math there, initial velocity, that's one meter per second. And then I'm adding that to the acceleration. So that's three meters per second and multiplying that times time. So in this case, it is five seconds. So if I go and plug that into my calculator, do all the math, I get a final velocity of 16 meters per second. So in other words, if I would have just been standing there at the top and started from an uh, initial velocity of zero, after five seconds, I would have been traveling 15 meters per second. But in this case, uh, what happens is I go and uh, I have that start, I'm starting out with one meter per second of velocity. So that is, um, so that's just kind of how it works out. Let's do another example. So same idea as before, you've got the student on the sled going down the hill, three meters per second squared, um, initial velocity of, of one meter per second, but this time it wants to know how far has the student traveled after that or after five seconds. So how far, now we're looking for distance. And I wrote this down before, so you've already got that. Um, but in this case, 
we're going to solve for distance. So distance is equal to the initial velocity multiplied by the time plus one half times the acceleration times time squared. So when I go and plug in those numbers, so my initial velocity, that's right here, so 1.0 meters per second multiplied by 5 seconds, and I add that to 1 half times the acceleration, so 3.0 meters per second squared multiplied by the time squared. So, and our time is five seconds. I knew it was there somewhere. So when I go and take that and do, or put that into my calculator, I get a distance of about, oh, let's say 42.5 meters without sig figs. And so if we wanted to round that to about 43 meters with sig figs, we'd be all set. All right, last one. In this case, we've got a penny that's being thrown downward off of a cliff, and it has an initial velocity of about 15 meters per, per second. Um, the cliff's 100 meters high, so how fast is that penny traveling when it hits the ground? So let's do a little drawing here. So here we go. Here's my cliff. Here's one of you guys standing on top of the cliff, and you go and you throw that penny down because I don't know what you're, what you're thinking doing that. But it's headed down that way. So we've got an initial velocity, vi, it equals 15 meters per second. Um, the distance, okay, or the height of that is 100 meters. You're ways up there. Also, uh, it's, it's not mentioned in here, but it's just assume that you understand this. Well, what's causing it to accelerate? It's, it's falling, okay? So it's in free fall. There's no air resistance in this pretend world. So in this case, my acceleration is going to be equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. So wh what are we trying to find here? Well, we want to know that if you are a squirrel down there, that's supposed to be a squirrel, all right? How, or how fast is that penny traveling when it hits you? So we're looking for our, that final velocity. Um, so the equation that we're going to use, final velocity, is equal to, this is the, the square root of the initial velocity squared plus 2 times acceleration times distance. So if I go ahead and put all of these in here, so my initial velocity is 15 meters per second. I'm going to square that plus 2 times the acceleration, so in this case 9.8 meters per second squared because we're in free fall. And the distance traveled is 100 meters. So if I go and do that and put that into my calculator, I'm going to get that it's traveling about 47 meters per second when it hits the little squirrel at the very bottom of the cliff. So hopefully that helps, guys. Um, remember, these are acceleration problems where you have an initial velocity. And let me know if you have any questions.